So in this video, I'm going to talk about inverse functions, and more specifically, I want to talk about logarithmic functions, which are a special case of inverse functions. So I want to define the logarithms as inverse functions, and I want to be able to perform some calculations with logarithmic functions of different bases. So the first thing we're going to do is define a logarithm or a logarithmic function as the inverse of an exponential function, so functions where x is in the exponent. And so it's important to recognize that if I have some function where y equals some number base to the x exponent, I can turn it around and rewrite it as log base b. Notice it's a little subscript b down there on the bottom of y equals x. So what this is saying is if I have a number down here, and another number here, it's asking, hey, what exponent do I raise the base to, base b, to get the number y? And the answer is that x, which is the exponent. So for example, I could write log base 2 of 4, and it says, hey, what power do I raise 2 to get 4? And the answer is 2 squared. So the squared becomes my answer. Uh, very similarly, I could say, hey, what if I do log base 10 of 1,000? So three zeros. Well, the question becomes, hey, if I have 10, how many times do I multiply it by itself to get 1,000? And the answer is 3. 10 to the third equals 1,000. All right, now that I've got that handled, I do want to talk about two very particular bases um, with regard to exponent or exponents and logs. Um, if you don't see a number down here, if it just says log of x or log of 5, it's automatically implying that the base is 10. So I'll write it as log 10x. The other one that we see particularly often is ln x. Now, if it says ln, notice it's not in, it's ln, it's a lowercase l. It's referring to log base e of x. Now, e happens to be 2.718 and some change. It is a irrational number that keeps on going forever and ever and ever and has a very special uh, explanation that goes into it regarding exponential functions. Um, there are a few things that I do want to point out while I'm talking about bases is, uh, number one, our base has to be greater than zero and it can't be one. So it has to be some positive number that's not one. Um, so now that I've talked about that, there are some laws of logarithms that are worth mentioning just because they make things simpler. For example, if I take log base B of one, the answer is always zero because if you have some number, and you raise it to the zero exponent, you always get one. So ln of one is zero. Uh, same idea with log base b of b. If you want to start off with b and say, hey, what exponent gives me the same answer? Well, that's just one. So ln e, notice this is log base e of e, that's one. Um, if you have two things multiplied together, in this case I'm saying m and n, then what I can do with a logarithm is I can actually treat them as addition separately. So log base b of m plus log base b of n. For example, if I have log base 4 of 5 times x, I can rewrite it as log base 4 of 5 plus log base 4 of x. Same idea if I'm dividing. The only difference is, like with multiplication here, we turned it into addition. If I have division here, it should be subtraction. They are inverse operations of each other. So if I have log base 4 of x divided by 5, I can write this as log base 4 of x minus log base 4 of 5. Please note, because it is a common mistake, that if someone sees log base 4 of 5 times log base 4 of x, this is not the same thing. These are not equal to log base 4 of 5x or anything at all. There, there is no shortcut for that one. Um, another one is, is if I have log base b of some number to an exponent, I can actually just pull out the exponent out front so it becomes k times log base b of m. This, is, whoop, this comes uh, in a lot of handy when we try to do some of the calculations later on. 
Um, but so what I'll do is if I have log base four of X to the fifth, what I can do is I can write it as five times log base four of X. Um, for example, here's another one. If I have log base B of B to the K, this is a good example of when it comes in handy to, to know this, this rule. I can take the K out front, which leaves me with log base B of B. But log base B of B, we said earlier, was 1. So it's K times 1, which is just K. Essentially, these two Bs will kind of knock each other out, and we're left over with just the exponent, which was K. So, for example, here, if I have log base 2 of 8, now mind you, that's really log base 2 of 2 cubed, essentially the 2s will cancel out and we'll be left over with 3. Again, it's kind of relying on that fact again. It's using two rules, that this 3 can come out front, and then it's log base 2 of 2, which is 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. Uh, same idea here. We have b to the log base b of k. This will also give me k for a very similar reason to the other one. It's actually the concept of taking the function and its inverse and plugging it into one another. So, for instance, here I have 2 to the log base 2 of 3. Well, the answer is just 3 because here's a base, here's a base. They kind of cancel each other out. Um, so you're just left over with that 3, whatever's inside that logarithm. The other one that I want to point out, which was it used to be a lot more important than it is nowadays, um, is the change of base formula. Uh, what it says is that if I want to change the base to any other number, then what I can do is log base C of the top number, which is A, divided by log base C of B, the bottom number. So A on top, B on bottom. And I just have to keep these new bases the same. Uh, the reason I mentioned that this used to be more important is because it used to be that calculators didn't have a log with any base button in their uh, in their system that in the repertoire so you had to actually find some way to calculate them without just having a button so a lot of times if I had to do something like log base 4 of 6 which that's not a nice one because hey is there any power I can raise 4 to to get 6 and the answer is no so what I ended up having to do was I would end up typing in ln of 6 over ln of 4 and it would give me the same answer or I could hit log 6 over log 4 and again it would still give me the same answer as long as top and bottom have the same base and I just move the top number on top and the bottom number on bottom it still works. So now I'm going to do a couple of real quick examples with this stuff. For example it says round to three decimal places if necessary. This first one says log base 3 of 27. So the question is 3 to the what gives me 27? The answer is 3 because 3 squared is 9 Multiply by 3 again, you get 27. Um, here's another one, log, and notice there's no number down here, so we're just going to assume it's 10 of 1 over 100. Well, I hope everyone knows that log base 10 of 100 is actually 2 because 10 squared is 100. Well, if I want it to go to the denominator, it needs to be a negative exponent, so the answer here is negative 2. Don't believe me? Type it into the calculator. If you type in... And make sure you hit the right buttons. If you type in log parentheses 1 divided by 100 and end the parentheses, you should get negative 2. Um, here's another one, ln of e to the fourth. Again, I'm going to go back up to this property here that I have starred. And it's log base b of b is 1. Well, I can take the exponent out and write 4 ln of e. Well, ln of e is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Now, this next one, ln of 9, does not have a nice answer. It's not a power of e. So I am going to have to go to my calculator. I'm just going to type in ln of 9. And it says three decimal places, and it gives me 2.197. What that means is, hey, this is base e. If I take e to the 2.197, I should get something close to 9. Maybe not exactly 9, but something close this last one, log base 5 of 10. Again, not every calculator has a button where you can type in any base down here. A lot of the new ones really do, but if your calculator does not or you're just not sure how to do it, you can always type in, like I said, log 10 divided by log 5 or ln 10 divided by ln 5. It should give you the same answer either way. So log base 5 of 10 gives me 1.4. Three, and again, it says round 
to one decimal or to three decimal places, so I'll round up to four point four three one. The answer that I actually get in the calculator is one point four three zero six. So again, you have to round that zero up. Um, the last one says to condense the expression log base five excuse me, 5 times log base 5 of x minus 3 log base 5 of y plus 9 log base 5 of z into a single logarithm. Now, it is important to recognize that these bases should all be the same. If they're not, I would have to use the change of base formula. But since they're all the same, I don't have to worry about it. The other thing I'm going to point out is this number in front is actually the exponent of what's in there. So I'm going to move that up. So I'll write that as log base 5 of x to the fifth minus take this three and put it on the exponent of the y so it'll be log base five of y cubed plus take the nine put it on the z plus log base five of z to the ninth and the other rule that i'm going to use is what happens if i'm adding or subtracting these logarithms when i want to condense them well since this is subtraction first i can actually divide what i'm taking the logarithm of so i'll rewrite that as log base 5 of x to the fifth divided by y to the third. I'm going to keep adding that log base 5 of z to the ninth. And like I said, when you subtract logarithms, you divide. So when I'm adding these two logarithms, I'm going to multiply by that z to the ninth. So my final answer here will be log base 5 of x to the fifth times z to the ninth over y to the third. Notice the order that I did that in. I went from left to right with adding and subtracting. I did not put, excuse me, the z to the ninth on the bottom with the y. It actually goes on top because it's positive and so was the x to the fifth. The only one that was negative was that log base five of y to the third. So that's the only one that goes to the bottom. Hopefully that does help you guys better understand logarithms in general and how they are related to inverse functions as well as how to calculate them. Have a great day.